What if I told you that based on the scientific research and work of a sleep doctor that we don't actually all need eight hours of sleep? What if I told you that genetics plays a huge role in your sleep patterns? What if I told you you were genetically wired for a particular sleep schedule? What if I told you that based on your particular sleep chronotype, if you played by that chronotype's rules that you would actually have maximum sleep efficiency? meaning you could actually sleep less and feel more refreshed and more rejuvenated the next day. We are about to dive into the four different chronotypes, how to determine your chronotype and how to calculate your sleep pattern and much more. Now you may be asking yourself, what is a chronotype? To answer this question, we first must define what a biological clock is. A biological clock is an internal timekeeper that sets your hormones, energy levels, and plays an incredible influence in your daily success. Now you can think of your chronotype as a sleep avatar or a sleep character. And with any character, you have your own set of traits and patterns. So these chronotypes not only have sleep patterns, but there also seems to be associated personality characteristics or traits as well. Now, I'm sure that you are actually familiar with two chronotypes that are kind of in popular culture, and those would be the night owl and the early bird. The early bird gets the worm. The night owl, well, I'm not sure what the night owl gets, but he gets something. Well, based on the research of Dr. Michael Bruce, he was very dissatisfied with these chronotypes, and I believe that there have been other people that have tried to make chronotypes in the past, and largely he felt that this did not characterize what he saw within his work and the patients that he was seeing. And so he actually determined that there are four chronotypes. We have the bear, the wolf, the lion, and the dolphin. Now, before I go into more of the characteristics and traits and sleep patterns of these chronotypes, do you know your chronotype yet? If you don't, make sure you head on over to chronoquiz.com. You do have to surrender your email address, but it's a very quick quiz. It takes one to two minutes and boom, you got your chronotype and then we can move on, come back, watch the, the rest of this video. Now, first of all, we have the bear. The bear is the most common. It is almost 50% of people that have this chronotype. Bear personalities are dominated by cautiousness, extroversion, friendliness, and ease to talk to and being open-minded. Their sleep pattern is to wake up in a daze after hitting the snooze button, maybe once or twice, start to feel tired by mid to late evening and sleep deeply, but not as long as they'd like. They're most alert during the mid morning into early afternoon and they're most productive in late morning. As far as naps are concerned, bears catch extra hours on the weekends on the couch, but not typically during the work week. Bear sleeping patterns typically correspond to the solar cycle and waking up with the sun and going to bed. So they stay consistent with that type of cycle. So next we have the wolf chronotype. Let's dig into that a little bit more. Wolf personality traits are impulsivity, pessimism, creativity, and moodiness. Their sleep pattern is that wolves have difficulty waking up before 9 a.m. They do it, but they're not happy about it, are groggy until midday, and don't feel tired until midnight or later. They are most alert about 7 p.m., most productive in the late morning and late evening, and naps, they are tempting, but if a wolf sleeps during the day, he probably won't fall asleep at night, and so it's just not worth it to them. So we don't have a night owl in Dr. Bruce's four chronotypes, but there are the correspondences. So a wolf is corresponds to the night owl, and as we will get into, the lion is the early bird. So moving on to the lion, let's go into the lion's characteristics. Lion personalities focus on conscientiousness, stability, practicality, and optimism. Their sleep pattern is to wake up bright-eyed and bushy-tailed at dawn or earlier, start to feel tired in the late afternoon, and fall asleep rather easily. They are most alert at noon. They're most productive in the morning, and as far as naps go, lions hardly ever nap. They'd rather be doing something useful. Now, the fourth chronotype is called the dolphin. Now, what's really unique about the dolphin as an animal is that they don't fully sleep. They sleep one hemisphere of their brain at a time, and so that they, are, they can always be awake and aware and conscientious. So, as you would expect, 
if they never turn off, you would suspect that this chronotype is the one that has the most problems with insomnia. So if you're an insomniac, then more than likely you are a dolphin. And let me just read some of the characteristics of this chronotype. Dolphins have four key personality traits, cautiousness, introversion, neuroticism, and intelligence. Their sleep pattern is that of wake up feeling unrefreshed and are tired until late in the evening when they suddenly hit their stride. Most alert late at night and most productive in spurts throughout the day. As far as naps go, they try to catch up on sleep but can't quite make it happen. They'd like to, but they just sleep is not something that they easily fall into. Now, another good way to think of the chronotypes is this way, the bear. The bear is the middle of the road, okay? Then we have the lion. The lion is the, the early morning person. They love the mornings. And then we have the wolf. The wolf is the nighttime person. And then finally, we have the dolphins, which are the people that have sleep issues, sleep problems. Th those are the insomniacs. And so as you, as you can imagine, there's different kind of, also different characteristics that we didn't mention. Uh, in the that I just went over and some of those are like the wolves they as they have more impulsivity they're more of the night owls so they like to they can be a, some, some more of the party types um, they typically like to have more risk they're not adverse to risk whereas bears are a little bit more cautious as well as the dolphins lions um, they can be typical those are usually the go-getters the CEOs and that type now, if you, if you kind of go to Dr. Bruce's website or you read his book, The Power of When, then you can kind of dive into this a little bit more. He lists some of the celebrity types that fit into each chronotype and you can kind of glean some characteristics just by uh, evaluating those chronotypes within certain celebrity personalities. Now you may have heard of Tom Bilyeu. He has that podcast called Impact Theory, his health kind of component of that is called health theory. And he actually had a fantastic podcast with two of the sleep doctors, one of them being here, Dr. Michael Bruce, and then also Jason McEwen. And he sat down with them and asked them all these questions related to the chronotypes and the research that is coming out and is available on sleep. And one of the things that he had with his life, he said, you know, when I was in my 20s, I was definitely a wolf. I was a night owl. I always stayed up super, super late. I woke up late in the day, super groggy, just kind of dragged through most of the day. And I didn't kind of catch my stride until the end of the day, you know, and I would just keep going to bed later and later up to the point where I actually had to set an alarm to get up to have a video shoot at 10 p.m. And he says, now, now, I am the opposite, I am a lion. I wake up, I go to bed super, super early, like 8.30 to 9 p.m. and I wake up at three in the morning. So, you know, what's up with that? Well, he says, actually, Dr. Bruce says, well, actually, that makes a lot of sense. Now, we actually go through all the different chronotypes during our lifetime, typically. And Tom's like, what, what do you mean? Well, think about it, when you're a baby, you, go to bed early you wake up early as you kind of start aging more towards adolescence you start wanting to go to bed later and you want to keep sleeping in and what happens is somewhere in your 20s mid 20s maybe a little bit later it kind of depends from person to person you actually start to solidify your chronotype and that will kind of stabilize and stay the same until you're about 55. What happens at 55? Well, your melatonin levels start to kind of shift and change. And so we can start to see some of that stability of the chronotype change again. And now what's interesting that I kind of alluded to in the intro is that chronotype is largely genetically determined. We're discovering all these things. We have these type of dispositions that are largely influenced by our genetics. And there are actually 74 different genetic variations that kind of play into this chronotype. These are SNPs. They're called SNPs, which is short for SNP, which is short for single nucleotide polymorphism. And so these are just tiny genetic variations. And so we have 74 of them that they have found so far that contribute to the way that we sleep, our patterns, our behaviors, our habits. Now, if you're lucky, you could have hit the genetic lottery and you only need five hours of sleep, but most people 
that is not nearly enough and you're going to run yourself ragged. Sleep isn't critically important, so you need to make sure that you're not fooling yourself into how much sleep that you need, because if you're not getting enough, sure, you might have more wakeful hours during the day, but when it comes down to it and what you're producing at the end of the day, you're gonna be able to be produce less and you'll have more time, but you're gonna be able to produce less. If you just get good sleep, you're gonna be able to produce more and be more productive and have a better sense of well-being, have better relationships, be more focused and present with less time. Now, another little interesting nugget that I found was at this website called sleepscore.com and it utilizes, uh, kind of does a calculation of minutes. So basically the lion, the lion and the bear, they typically go through five sleep cycles. Now we have four stages of sleep. And you can think of it as five, then it's four. So you have the first one that is basically just getting into, it's the transitory state between wakefulness and sleep. Then you have number two, which not a whole lot is happening there. And then three and four, that's where you have your deep restorative sleep. And then you have REM sleep, your rapid eye movement. This is when your brain has the most um, activity. Now you go through cycles. That's that all four of those uh, stages, that's a cycle. So you go through typically the bear and the lion, they go through five sleep cycles per night. However, the wolf and the dolphin, they typically only go through four cycles. So that's typically why they need less sleep. Now a typical sleep cycle lasts 90 minutes. So the sleep score, the way that they do this, they calculate how you, sh what time you should go to bed based on a calculation. First of all, you take the time that you wanna wake up at, like let's say you have to work at, at 8 p.m., 8 p.m. <laughs> Let's change that. Let's change that to 8 a.m. And you, so you want to wake up at 6, 6 a.m. So you can get ready, do your thing, all that good stuff. Okay. So what we do is we're going to make a calculation, then count backwards. So if you are the bear, then you're going to have five sleep cycles. So five times 90, five sleep cycles times 90, because each sleep cycle is 90 minutes long. And then we're going to add 20 minutes to fall asleep. Okay, so we roll that back and so that would be, be 450 minutes and therefore you would go to bed around a little after 10 p.m. So this would be the same case for the lions. Now, as I said, the wolves and the dolphins, they have to sleep less. They only get four sleep cycles typically. And so let's take a look at that for a bio time bedtime for lions and bears. So uh, some more examples, bears, if you wake up at 7 a.m., lions or bears, you wake up at 7 a.m. then you're gonna go to bed at 11, 10 p.m. Okay, and then, so wolves. Wolves only having the four cycles of 90 minutes, so that's 360 minutes of sleep with, they typically have more time to fall asleep. They need more time to fall asleep. So they need about 40 minutes to fall asleep, give or take, and so that equals 400 minutes total that we're going to calculate from the time um, going backwards from the time that they have to get up. If they get up at 7 a.m., then they're gonna to want to get to bed by midnight. And then uh, at 6.30 a.m., you're gonna to want to get to bed at 11.50 p.m. Now, I took this quiz and it said that I am a bear. Now, I would say that I am a bear when I'm healthy, when I'm being mindful and conscientious about my health and I'm keeping a schedule. Now, I can kind of be, I'm a very, I can be a very right-brained, creative person and then kind of just go shoot from the hips and fly by the seat of my pants and if I'm working on a project I'll just be super into it and passionate about it and I won't go to sleep and then my sleep schedule just gets all kind kinds of jacked up and so I kind of fall into the category of a wolf so depending on how I answer these questions I kind of answered I did it twice and the first time I answered it how I am now and then other times I thought of how how I basically am when I am kind of being the more creative type and then I kind of fall more into the wolf category. But what category, what chronotype are you? I would love to know what your chronotype is and what you think about it. Do you think it's accurate? Leave that in the comments below. And then this topic, I find it super fascinating. It is so refreshing that there's new information and new material out there in the science of sleep. 
And so this is a great topic of discussion and to think and have more awareness on this topic. So I hope that you enjoyed it as much as I did making this video. And if you did like this video, if you learned something, something from it, please give it a thumbs up. Now, I also encourage you to take a look at that interview that I mentioned with Tom Bilyeu and the sleep doctors, Michael Bruce and Jason McEwen on impact theory or health theory. I'll leave that in the, in the description below. And then also check out my interview that I did with my buddy JJ over here with his Aura Ring. This is a great biohacking device you could think of it as to track sleep. It also does a lot of other great things like track heart rate variability, your temperature, and some other things. So check out that review over here. And also be sure to check out more sleep hygiene videos right over here. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Until the next video, take care and to your health.